My half-sister's affair with my brother-in-law shattered our family. Now I'm rebuilding my life from the ground up. I'm Sophia, 28F, and I've been dealing with some family drama lately. My parents divorced when I was 10, and it wasn't a pleasant experience. My mom moved out, and I stayed with my dad. For years, it was just the two of us. We were close, and I thought we told each other everything. But as I grew older, I realized there were a lot of things my dad kept from me. When I was 16, my dad introduced me to Linda, 50F. They had been dating for a while without telling me. I was hurt that he had kept this secret, but I tried to be supportive. A few months later, they got married, and Linda moved in with her daughter, Emma, 25F. The transition wasn't easy. I went from being an only child to suddenly having a stepster. Emma and I never really clicked. She was bubbly and outgoing, while I was more reserved. We were polite to each other, but we never became close friends or anything like that. I moved out for college at 18, glad to have some space for my new family. I focused on my studies and made new friends. After graduation, I got a job in the same city and decided to stay. I would visit my dad and Linda for holidays. But that was about it. Emma and I barely kept in touch, just the occasional birthday text or family dinner when I was in town. Fast forward to now. Emma recently moved to my city with her husband Jake, 27M, and their two kids, Liam, 4M, and Ava, 2F. They moved here because Jake got a new job at a tech startup. Emma doesn't work, she's a stay-at-home mom. When they first moved, my dad called and asked me to help them settle in. I wasn't thrilled about it, but I agreed. I showed them around the city, helped them find a good neighborhood, and even assisted with some of the moving. I thought that would be the end of it, but I was wrong. About a week after they moved, Emma started showing up at my apartment every evening with her kids. She would ask me to watch them for an hour or two while she ran errands. At first, I agreed because I wanted to be nice, but it quickly became a daily thing. I work from home as a graphic designer, and even though I was done with work by the time she dropped the kids off, I value my alone time in the evenings. I use that time to unwind, work on personal projects, or catch up with friends. The kids are okay, but I'm not really a kid person. I don't know how to entertain them, and I always feel anxious when they're around. I told Emma multiple times that she needed to find a babysitter, but she always had an excuse. It's just for today, she'd say, or I'm still getting used to the city. I started to feel like she was taking advantage of me. Last Friday, I had plans to go with my friends, we were celebrating my best friend's promotion, and I had been looking forward to it all week. I told Emma in the morning that I couldn't watch the kids that evening. She said okay, and I thought that was that. But at 6 p.m., just as I was getting ready to leave, Emma showed up at my door with Liam and Ava. Before I could say anything, she handed me the kids and drove off. I tried calling her, but she didn't pick up. I even tried calling Jake, but he didn't answer either. I had to cancel my plans and stay home with the kids. I was furious. This wasn't the first time Emma had disrupted my plans, but it was the first time she had completely ignored my refusal to babysit. I was stuck with the kids until 9 p.m. when Emma finally came to pick them up. When she arrived, I confronted her about her behavior. She acted like it wasn't a big deal and said she had an emergency. When I pressed her for details, she was vague and evasive. I told her that this couldn't happen again and that she needed to find a real babysitter. Emma got upset and said I was being selfish and that family should help each other out. Um, that's when I lost my temper. I told her that we weren't really family. I said that just because our parents got married doesn't mean we have to be close. I reminded her that we barely spoke for years before she moved here and now she was acting like we were best friends. I told her I was done babysitting and that she shouldn't bring the kids over anymore unless invited. Emma left in tears. I felt a bit bad, but I also felt relieved to have finally set a clear boundary. Um, I thought that would be the end of it, but I was wrong. The next day, I got a call from my dad. He was furious with me. He said Emma had called him crying, saying I had been cruel to her and the kids. Um, my dad told me that I should apologize and continue helping Emma with babysitting. He said that's what family does for each other. I tried to explain my side with Sideway. I told him about how Emma had been taking advantage of me, how she had ruined my plans multiple times, and how she never respected my time or boundaries. But my dad wasn't listening. He kept insisting that I needed to be more understanding and helpful. Then my dad said something that really hurt me. He said that I was selfish and that he was disappointed in the person I had become. He said that Linda and Emma were my family now and I needed to accept that. He even brought up how I had been distant since he married Linda, implying that I was still holding a grudge. I was shocked. I told him that they were his family, not mine, and that I was an adult who could make my own decisions. I reminded him that I had my own life and responsibilities, and that I couldn't drop everything to be Emma's on-call babysitter. This led to a huge argument. My dad threatened to cut me off if I didn't apologize to Emma and start babysitting again. I was hurt and angry. 
I told him that I was financially independent and didn't need his money. I also said that if he wanted to cut me off over this, then maybe we weren't as close as I thought we were. The call ended with my dad hanging up on me. Since then, I've been getting messages from Linda and other family members telling me I'm being unreasonable. So they're saying I should be more understanding of Emma's situation as a young mother in a new city. Some of my aunts have even called, saying I'm tearing the family apart. Emma hasn't contacted me directly, but she's been posting on social media about how family should always be there for each other. She's been sharing quotes about the importance of sisterhood and how blood doesn't family. It feels like she's trying to guilt trip me publicly. I feel like I'm going crazy. Am I really in the wrong here? I don't think it's fair for Emma to expect me to be a free babysitter whenever she wants. And I don't think it's right for my dad to threaten me over this. But now I'm starting to wonder if I went too far by saying Emma and Linda aren't my real family. Part of me feels guilty. Maybe I should have been more patient with Emma. Maybe I should have tried harder to bond with her when we were younger. But another part of me feels angry and resentful. I feel like my feelings and boundaries aren't being respected. I've always valued my independence. After my parents' divorce, I learned to rely on myself. I worked hard in school, got scholarships for college, and built a career I'm proud of. I'm not used to having people depend on me like this, and I'm not sure I want that responsibility. At the same time, I can't help but think about Liam and Ava. They're innocent in all this, and I do care about them. I don't want them to feel rejected or unwanted but I also don't think it's healthy for them to have an aunt who resents babysitting them. I've tried talking to some of my friends about this, but they're divided. Some think I'm being too harsh and that I should try to work things out with Emma. Others think I'm right to set boundaries and that Emma is being entitled. I don't know what to do. Should I apologize? Should I stand my ground? I feel like this whole situation has gotten out of control and I'm not sure how to fix it. I don't want to lose my relationship with my dad, but I also don't want to be taken advantage of. This situation has made me question a lot of things about my family and myself. Am I really as selfish as my dad says? Have I been holding on to resentment about his remarriage without realizing it? Should I have tried harder to form a relationship with Emma over the years? I keep thinking about how different things might be if my mom was still in the picture. She moved across the country after the divorce and we don't talk much. I wonder what she would say about all this. I'm at a loss. I feel like no matter what I do, someone will be upset with me. I want to do the right thing, but I'm not sure what that is anymore. Ida? Update 1, it's been about two weeks since my last post, and things have only gotten more complicated. I want to thank everyone who commented and gave me advice. It really helped me see things more clearly. After reading the comments, I decided to stand my ground. I didn't apologize to Emma or start babysitting again. This led to some tense family dynamics. My dad stopped talking to me altogether, and Emma kept posting passive-aggressive things on social media about fake family members and the importance of being there for your nieces and nephews. The silence from my dad was particularly hard. We used to talk at least once a week, and now there was nothing. I tried to tell myself it was for the best, that I was setting healthy boundaries, but it still hurt. Linda, my stepmom, tried to play peacemaker. She called me a few times trying to get me to reconcile with Emma and my dad. She said she understood where I was coming from, but that family was about compromise. I appreciated her effort, but I still felt like everyone was dismissing my feelings. Mom, I threw myself into my work, taking on extra freelance projects to keep my mind off the family drama. I also started going to the gym more often and picked up the new hobby painting. It was therapeutic to create something beautiful amidst all the chaos in my life. However, something unexpected happened last week that changed everything. I was at a local coffee shop, working on a project, when I overheard a familiar voice. I'm to see you. So it's Jake, Emma's husband. He was sitting at a table with a woman I didn't recognize. So at first I thought nothing of it, assuming it was a work colleague. But then I saw Jake reach across the table and hold the woman's hand. They were speaking in hushed tones and looking at each other in a way that made it clear this wasn't just a friendly meeting. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Jake was supposed to be at work, not having what looked like a romantic meeting with another woman. I sat there frozen, not sure what to do. Should I confront him? Should I take a picture as proof? In the end, I didn't either. I quietly packed up my things and left the coffee shop. I went home, my mind racing with what I had just witnessed. I didn't confront Jake. I wasn't even sure if I should tell Emma. Would she believe me? Our relationship was already strained, and accusing her husband of cheating could make things even worse. I decided to sit on the information for a day and think about what to do. The next evening, I got a call from Emma. I almost didn't answer, thinking it would be another attempt to guilt me into be sitting, but something told me to pick up. Emma was crying and asked if she could come over. I agreed, thinking maybe she had found out about Jake. When she arrived, she was a mess. Her eyes were red and puffy, and she looked like she hadn't slept in days. But it wasn't about Jake at all. Emma confessed that she had been lying about running errands when she left the kids with me. She admitted that she had been seeing a therapist for postpartum depression and anxiety. Emma broke down as she told me her story. She had been struggling since Ava was born, 
feeling overwhelmed and inadequate as a mother. She hadn't told anyone in the family because she was ashamed and afraid of being judged. The times she left the kids with me were when she had her therapy sessions. I was stunned. I felt the mix of emotions, sympathy for what Emma was going through, anger that she had lied and taken advantage of me, and guilt for how harshly I had judged her. I told Emma that while I understood she was going through a tough time, it wasn't okay for her to lie and dump her kids on me without warning. We talked for hours. Emma apologized for her behavior and for not being upfront about her struggles. She said she would find a proper babysitter for when she had her sessions. I told her that while I couldn't be a regular babysitter, I would be willing to help out occasionally if she gave me advance notice. As we talked, I started to see Emma in a new light. I realized that behind her seemingly perfect life, she was struggling just like anyone else. It made me think about how little I really knew about her life and how quick I had been to judge her. Emma also opened up about her feelings of loneliness since moving to the city. She said she had been so excited to be closer to me, hoping we could finally build the sisterly relationship we never had. She admitted that she had pushed too hard and too fast and apologized for not respecting my boundaries. I shared my own feelings too. I told her about how I had felt left out when dad remarried, how I had struggled to find my place in our new family dynamic. Ami Jim, when more, we talked about our childhood, sharing memories and perspectives we had never discussed before. Just as we were starting to mend our relationship, I was hit with the dilemma of whether to tell Emma about what I saw with Jake. I wrestled with the decision, but in the end, I decided to be honest with her. I gently told her what I had witnessed at the coffee shop. Um, Emma's reaction wasn't what I expected. She didn't seem surprised or upset. Instead, she got very quiet and then said, I know about Jake's meetings. It turns out, the woman Jake was meeting is his half-sister. Jake was adopted as a baby and had recently found his biological family. He had been meeting his half-sister in secret because he wasn't ready to tell Emma or the rest of the family. He was afraid of how it might change their family dynamics, especially with his adoptive parents. I felt relieved that Jake wasn't cheating, but also frustrated at all the secrecy in our family. I told Emma that all of this, her therapy, Jake's meetings, could have been avoided if everyone had just been honest from the beginning. Emma agreed and said she would talk to Jake about being more open with the family. She also promised to be more honest with me in the future. We ended the evening on better terms than we had been in weeks. The next day, I called my dad. I told him about Emma's struggles and how we had talked things out. I also told him that while I was willing to have a relationship with Emma and help out occasionally with the kids, I still needed my boundaries respected. To my surprise, my dad was understanding. He apologized for how he had reacted and admitted that he had put too much pressure on me. So we agreed to work on our communication and respect each other's boundaries more. We also talked about the past, about how his remarriage had affected me and how we had drifted apart over the years. It was a difficult conversation but it felt like we were finally addressing issues we had ignored for too long. Um, so now things are calmer, but I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. There are so many secrets and unspoken issues in our family. I'm glad Emma and I were able to talk things out, but I can't help feeling that there's more drama waiting to unfold. I'm trying to stay positive, but I'm also bracing myself for whatever might come next. This whole experience has shown me how little I really knew about my family members' lives. It's made me wonder what other secrets might be lurking beneath the surface. For now, I'm focusing on rebuilding my relationships with Emma and my dad, one step at a time. When I'm T, it's not easy, and there are still moments of tension, but it feels like we're moving in the right direction. I'm learning that family relationships are complicated, and that communication and honesty are key. I'm also trying to find a balance between being there for my family and maintaining my own boundaries. It's a work in progress, but I'm hopeful that we can find a way to be a family, without sacrificing our individual needs and identities. Update 2, it's been about a month since my last update, and I wish I could say things have gotten better. But they haven't. In fact, they've gotten much, much worse. Remember how I mentioned feeling like there was more drama waiting to unfold? Well, I was right, but I never could have predicted what happened next. Update 2 continued last week. I got a frantic call from Emma. She was crying and barely coherent. When I finally got her to calm down, she told me that she had found out some devastating news. It turns out Jake isn't just meeting his half-sister, he's been having an affair with her. Emma had become suspicious of Jake's frequent meetings and decided to follow him one day. She saw him meet the woman at a hotel instead of the usual coffee shop. She confronted him, and he admitted to the affair. He tried to justify it by saying he felt a connection with his half-sister that he had never felt before, but Emma was understandably disgusted and heartbroken. I was shocked. I felt guilty for not pushing harder when I first saw Jake with the woman. I tried to comfort Emma as best I could over the phone, but she was inconsolable. She said she was leaving Jake and asked if she and the kids could stay with me for a while. Despite our past issues, I couldn't turn her away in her time of need. I agreed to let them stay. Emma and the kids moved in with me the next day. It's been a challenging adjustment. N. My apartment isn't really set up for two young children, and Emma is still very emotional. She swings between crying and angry outbursts. 
I'm trying to be supportive, but it's taking a toll on me. To make matters worse, Jake has been harassing Emma with constant calls and messages. He's even shown up at my apartment a few times, causing scenes in the hallway. I've had to threaten to call the police to get him to leave. Um, it's been stressful for everyone, especially the kids who don't understand what's going on. In the midst of all this chaos, another bomb dropped. My dad called me, sounding stressed. He said he had something important to tell me and asked if he could come over. When he arrived, he dropped a bombshell that shook me to my core. It turns out Jake's half-sister isn't just his half-sister, she's my half-sister too. Um, my dad confessed that years ago, before he met my stepmom, he had a brief affair with Jake's biological mother. This woman gave birth to a daughter, the same woman Jake has been having an affair with. I was stunned. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My dad had kept this secret for nearly 30 years. He said he only found out recently when Jake's half-sister did a DNA test, and it matched with some of our relatives. My dad got in touch with her and discovered the truth. I felt like my whole world was crumbling. Worse, everything I thought I knew about my family was a lie. I was angry at my dad for keeping this secret, angry at Jake for his betrayal, and angry at myself for not seeing any of this coming. I haven't told Emma about this latest revelation yet. She's already dealing with so much, and I'm afraid this might push her over the edge. Um, but I know I'll have to tell her eventually. The past few days have been a blur. Um, I've been trying to keep things normal for the kids while also supporting Emma and processing my own feelings about this newfound sister. I've taken some time off work to deal with everything, but I'm not sure how long I can sustain this. I'm at a loss for what to do next. So my apartment has become a refuge for my sister and her kids, a hideout from her cheating husband, and now it feels like the epicenter of a family scandal that spans decades. I'm trying to hold it all together, but I feel like I'm drowning in secrets and lies. I don't know how our family will ever recover from this. The trust is broken, and I'm not sure it can be repaired. I'm considering going to therapy myself to deal with all of this, but right now, I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. I've tried to reach out to some friends for support but it's hard to explain the situation without sounding like I'm making it up. How do you tell someone that your brother-in-law is having an affair with your secret half-sister? It sounds like something out of a bad soap opera. I'm also worried about the long-term implications of all this. What will happen to Emma and the kids? Will Jake try to get custody? And what about this half-sister of mine? Should I try to contact her? Do I even want to know her given the circumstances? There's also the question of how this will affect my relationship with my dad. I'm angry that he kept this secret for so long, but I also understand that he was probably scared and ashamed. Still, it's hard to look at him the same way knowing what he did. For now, I'm focusing on taking care of Emma and the kids. I'm trying to create a stable environment for them in the midst of all this chaos. It's not easy, but it feels like the right thing to do. I'm also trying to take care of myself. I've started journaling to process my feelings, and I'm making sure to take some time each day to do something I enjoy, even if it's just reading a book or going for a walk. I know I'll have to make some big decisions soon about Emma's situation, about my relationship with my dad, about whether to contact my half-sister. But for now, I'm just trying to get through each day as it comes. If anyone has been through something similar or has any advice, I'd really appreciate it. Um, um, this whole situation feels overwhelming and I could use all the support I can get. Update 3, it's been three months since my last update and a lot has changed. After the shock of all the revelations wore off, we had to deal with the fallout. I finally told Emma about Jake's affair partner being our half-sister. She was devastated all over again, but in a way, it gave her the closure she needed. She filed for divorce and got a restraining order against Jake. The legal process has been messy, but Emma is standing her ground. Emma and the kids stayed stay with me for about a month before she found a small apartment of her own. She started working part-time at a local bookstore and is slowly rebuilding her life. We've actually grown closer through this ordeal. I help her with the kids sometimes, but on my own terms, and she respects my boundaries. As for our newly discovered half-sister, none of us have reached out to her. We're not ready for that yet, and honestly, I'm not sure if we ever will be. So the circumstances of her existence and her actions with Jake have made it difficult to consider having any kind of relationship with her. My relationship with my dad has been strained. I was angry with him for a long time for keeping such a big secret. We've had several long, difficult conversations about trust, honesty, and the impact of his choices. He's been seeing a therapist to work through his guilt and to learn how to rebuild trust with his family. It's a slow process, but we're making progress. I've started seeing a therapist myself to deal with all the emotional turmoil. It's been helpful in sorting out my feelings and setting healthy boundaries. I'm learning that it's okay to prioritize my own mental health and well-being, even when family members are in crisis. One unexpected outcome of all this is that I've reconnected with my mom. 
After everything came out, I reached out to her, needing someone to talk to who wasn't directly involved in the drama. We've had some good conversations, and she's been a source of support through all of this. We're working on rebuilding our relationship, and it's been nice to have her back in my life. I've also made some big changes in my life. I decided to take a sabbatical from my job and do some traveling. And, I needed to get away from all the family drama and find myself again. I'm writing this update from a small cafe in Europe, where I've been for the past month. This distance has given me perspective. I've realized that while family is important, it's not everything. The people who truly care about you will respect your boundaries and won't ask you to compromise your values or well-being. I'm not sure what the future holds for my family. The trust that was broken will take a long time to rebuild, if it ever does. But I'm focusing on myself now, healing and growing. I'm learning to define family on my own terms and surround myself with people who bring positivity into my life. Emma and I talk regularly. She's doing better, focusing on her kids and her new job. The divorce proceedings are ongoing, but she's handling it with strength I didn't know she had. We're planning a trip together with the kids next summer, something to look forward to. As for Jake, last I heard, he had moved out of the city. His affair with our half-sister ended badly, and he's been trying to make amends with his adoptive family. I don't know all the details, and frankly, I don't want to. My dad and I are slowly rebuilding our relationship. We talk once a week, and while things aren't back to normal, they're getting better. He's making an effort to be more open and honest, not just with me but with everyone in the family. This whole experience has taught me a lot about resilience, forgiveness, and the importance of honesty. It's also shown me that it's never too late to set boundaries and prioritize your own well-being. The trust that was broken will take a long time to rebuild, if it ever does. But I'm focusing on myself now, healing and growing. I'm learning to define family on my own terms and surround myself with people who bring positivity into my life. Ah, Emma and I talk regularly. She's doing better, focusing on her kids and her new job. The divorce proceedings are ongoing, but she's handling it with strength I didn't know she had. We're planning a trip together with the kids next summer, something to look forward to. As for Jake, last I heard, he had moved out of the city. His affair with our half-sister ended badly, and he's been trying to make amends with his adoptive family. I don't know all the details, and frankly, I don't want to. My dad and I are slowly rebuilding our relationship. We talk once a week, and while things aren't back to normal, they're getting better. He's making an effort to be more open and honest, not just with me but with everyone in the family. This whole experience has taught me a lot about resilience, forgiveness, and the importance of honesty. And it's also shown me that it's never too late to set boundaries and prioritize your own well-being. Um, to those who have followed my story and offered advice along the way, thank you. Your support has meant more than you know. If there's one thing I've learned from all of this, it's that life can surprise you in ways you never expect. All we can do is try to face each day with honesty, courage, and self-respect.